it is time to get serious. I am getting rid of many of my books. I'm therefore going to run a contest. The challenge before you will be not to cry. You could win one of four prizes, three theology books, three history books, three history of the war between the states books, or three cookbooks. They don't necessarily have to be exactly these. These would kind of be the default setting, but I'll let you kind of pick and choose a little bit. The contest will be to see how far you can get into the last two chapters of the last battle without crying. There will actually be no winners or losers. If you do a video in response, you will get entries. Let me show you how it's done. For the occasion, okay, first of all, our family has two Chronicles of Narnia sets. They're both in the proper order, of course. So both of our sets have the Magician's Nephew in the proper point, which is not at the beginning. Just F your eye. All right. So I pulled out my slightly older cloth bound. It's a 1964 edition, so there's nothing super valuable about it, but it feels cooler. As an adult, I have never read The Last Battle without crying. So you might not be able to either. Chapter 16, Farewell to Shadowlands. If one could run without getting tired, I don't think one would often want to do anything else. But there might be special reasons for stopping, and it was a special reason which made Eustace presently shout, I say, steady, look what we're coming to. And well he might, for now they saw before them Cauldron Pool, and beyond the pool, the high, unclimbable cliffs, and pouring down the yeah, cliffs, Eustace, thousands will also tons of water every second. Don't stop! Further up and further in! Take it in your stride! His voice could only just be heard above the roar of the water, the next moment, everyone saw that he had plunged into the pool and helter-skelter behind him with splash after splash. Itself. All the others did the same. This is absolutely crazy, said Eustace to Edmund. I know, and yet, said Edmund. Isn't it wonderful, said Lucy. Have you noticed one can't feel afraid, even if one wants to? Try it. By Jove, one can't, till it was more Eustace like Edmund. flying than running. And even the eagle overhead was going no faster than a great than horn, wonderfully loud and sweet blew from somewhere inside that walled garden, and the gates swung open. Tyrion stood holding his breath, and... Well, I guess I can get to the point where Reaper Cheap comes out. Tyrion stood holding his breath and wondering who would come out. But what came out was the last thing he had expected. A little sleek, bright-eyed, talking mouse with a red feather stuck in a circlet on its head and its left paw resting on a long sword. It bowed, a most beautiful bow, and said in its shrill voice, Welcome in the lion's name. Come further up and further in. Then Tyrion saw King Peter and King Edmund and Queen Lucy rush forward. Rush forward and kneel down and greet the mouse, and they all cried out, Reapy Cheap! And Tyrion breathed fast with the sheer wonder of it. For now he knew that he was looking at one of the great heroes of Narnia. All right, I'm going to keep going over, pull myself together. So like seven or eight pages here. Uh, he was looking at one of the great heroes of Narnia, Reepicheep the Mouse, who had fought at the great Battle of Baruna and afterwards sailed to the world's end with King Caspian the Seafarer. 
But before he had had much time to think of this, he felt two strong arms thrown about him and felt a bearded kiss on his cheeks and heard a well-remembered voice saying, What, lad, art thicker and taller since I last touched thee? It was his own father, the good King Erliab, but not as Tyrion had seen him last when they had brought him home, pale and wounded, from his fight with the giant, nor even as Tyrion remembered him in his later years when he was a grey-headed warrior. This was his father, young and merry, as he could just remember him from very early days, when he himself When he himself had been a little boy, playing games with his father in the castle garden at Caraparavel, just before bedtime on summer evenings, the very smell of the bread and milk he used to have for supper came back to him. Jewel thought to himself, I will leave them to talk for a little. Everyone you had ever, ever heard of, if you knew the history of those countries, seemed to be there. There was Glimfeather the Owl, and Puddleglum the Marshwiggle, and King Rillian the Disenchanted, and his mother the Star's Daughter, and his great father Caspian himself. And close behind him were the Lord Drinian and the Lord Byrne and Trumpkin the Dwarf and Trouble Hunter the Good Badger, with Glen. So it was, said the fawn. But you are now looking at the England within England. The real. There they saw their own father and mother waving back at them across the great deep valley. It was like when you see people waving at you from the deck of a big ship. And you are waiting on the key to meet them, which his long years went down. But then he said something else, at which the years perked up again. The humans couldn't hear what he had said either time. Then Aslan turned to them and said. You do not let yet look so happy as I mean you to be. Lucy said, We're so afraid of being sent away, Aslan, and you have sent us back into our own world so often. No fear of that, said Aslan. Have you not guessed? Their hearts leaped, and a wild hope rose within them. There was a real railway accident, said Aslan softly. Your father and mother and all of you are, as you used to call it, in the Shadowlands dead. The term is over. The holidays have begun. The dream has ended. The dream has ended. This is the morning. And as he spoke, he no longer looked to them like a lion, but the things that began to happen after that were so great and beautiful that I cannot write them. And for us, this is the end of all the stories. And we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes out forever. In which every chapter is better than the one before. I knew, uh, knew that would happen at some point. Yeah. All right, so now you know. Reapy chip is what gets me, but I can push through and hold it together to the very last paragraphs, and then it's all over. So, uh, yeah, these are the prizes. As I said, boom. You have to make a response video. If you use Periscope, 
then that's easy enough because you can just set your phone to save that video. Upload it to YouTube. There are four prizes in here. So you can win three theology books, three history books, three history of the war between the state books, or three cookbooks. The only thing you have to do to enter this thing is to do the video. Uh, and uh, that will earn you an entry. And then the winners will be from a random drawing. But as I said, four winners. Make sure you comment on this video or drop me an email or a line on my Facebook, Joffrey the Giant page. Make sure I know about your video so I can put it in the drawing. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys get super weepy. I mean, we're talking about a resurrection, about the new heavens, the new earth, we're talking about death life you're going to shed a tear too